Hey everyone, Woods Bitten here. So I went to Southern Assault 2016 tournament uh, a couple weekends ago uh, here in Durham, North Carolina. Took my Beast Herds army to them. Really excited for the tournament. I'm having so much fun with Ninth Age. I, um, I, but I don't know yet what to expect from the Beast Herds in my list in this tournament. I feel like I've just been all over the place with them. Winning games big, losing games big. Um, I feel like it's it's a, a little requires a little more finesse than I have been exhibiting with them. So, um, yeah, I was really looking forward to this. My my first game is against an opponent I've never played before. He has an amazing, amazingly beautiful ogre cons army. Now, as you as you know, if you watch my channel, I play ogre cons all the time against a very good player. So. Um, that's nice. It's an army that I know. I think I know its strengths and weaknesses. Um, yeah, so I thought uh, I, was, I was optimistic going into the game. So he's got a couple Yetis on the right. I'll post the list in the description so I don't have to bore you with all the details. But six tribesmen, four Tusker cavalry. Um, yeah, of course, he has like full command and iron fists on everything, I think, because iron fists are just kind of broken. Uh, he's got a big unit of mercenary veterans, another unit of six tribes and behind him. He's got two hero level characters, one's his general. He's attached to the um, tribesmen in the back here. He's got a battle standard bear on the left-hand side, and he's got two characters independent, standing independently that are both level two lore of butchery. Then here on the left flank, another unit of yetis and another unit of six tribesmen. So my thinking was, one, I have my Centaur hero with the Impaler on the far right. I'm going to vanguard him up and then move him on the right. And I just want to be able to keep him safe and use the Impaler to flank shot some stuff. Um, I've got my slow moving stuff on the right. Their job is not necessarily to march forward as quickly as possible, but just to um, present a zone of threat. So I've got a couple raiding chariots. I've got my Beast Lord on a, a, a Razor Tusk chariot and then another raiding chariot. Sorry for the blurry picture. I've got my bunker, I've got a battle standard bear in there. Otherwise, you know, just a bunch of wild horns. Got a the Dragon Ogre models representing a Razor Tusk. It's got a unit of feral hounds behind him. Uh, eight minotaurs, those things hit hard. <laughs> They're somewhat fragile, but oh man, do they hit like a ton of bricks. I've got a spellcaster behind him. He's rocking the lore of, of uh, wilderness. Got my gore attack, and then all my fast moving stuff on the left. Uh, Jabberwock, and then two vanguarding giants. So, um, and if you look on the hill on the upper right, uh, let's see, that's his uh, vanguarding yetis. I vanguarded my feral hounds up in the middle, and he chose not to vanguard his other unit of yetis. And some, you really can't see the picture here, but I also have a unit of mongrel raiders. So he let me go first, so you can see what I'm doing here. I'm, I'm just trying to position my chariots on the right, um, again, just to create a, a buffer zone that he doesn't want to go into. The problem is his yetis, I think they have swift strides, so they can tra charge so far, and I don't want them charging a chariot. So my chariots are backed up much more than I want them to be. Very, very unhappy with my positioning there. If you look at the top right, well, anyway, look at the left. All right, we'll go to the right. So I was able to vanguard this guy up and then march him up. That's something I haven't been doing yet. I was thinking that I couldn't march and shoot with the Impaler, but because this guy has light troop special rule when he's sober, he can vanguard, he can march, and then boom, he's in the flank. He can throw that Impaler. Here on the left, um, I had to sacrifice one of my chaff units so that uh, his bulls didn't just get an easy charge of my giants. Um, I don't love that, I, but I think I have plenty of chaff, so I think I'll be okay there. So during the magic phase, I get, um, I assume it's the Redwood Shaft, but I get, uh, I hit his mercenary veterans, I, I do a couple wounds to him. Uh, the Impaler hits his Tusker Cavalry, and I kill one, and then it gets stopped. But I'll take that, I'll take, I'll take one dead, it's a nice start. We go to Ogre Khan's turn one, and yeah, it really just kind of consolidates um, uh, on the right side. Uh, here on the left, he charges the Yetis into my, into my Feral Hounds, his, his Ogres don't take the bait, they just reposition so that my Giants and my Jabberwock are all in the front. He, of course, kills the dogs. Nothing of significance happens in the Magic Phase, and we go to Beast Herd's turn two. Um, yeah, so this is the turn that, that in retrospect, I think, um, was full of a couple important mistakes. But anyway, overall, it looks like this. Uh, you can see on the right, I'm, I'm sacrificing uh, Razor Tusk 
uh, to stop his yetis so that I can bring my chariots up a little bit. I sacrifice another unit of chaff, the feral hounds, in the middle to stop his his um, uh, his mercenary veterans and his Tusker cavalry from cha from from charging. I'm going to get back to the picture in just a second. Here on the left, both giants and the Jabberwock make it into this combat. That looks, I mean, one one thing I'm thinking of is if you can, you know, I'm hitting them hard with three big monsters. But the problem with giants is they're just wonky. Like, they can they can just do a, a bunch of wounds, they can, or, or they can just roll up and say, hey, we win combat by two, whereas otherwise we may have won by a lot. And um, this combat, actually, it's not that the giants did poorly, and it's not that I don't like uh, giants being able to vanguard up and apply immediate pressure, but I realized here that the... Um, Giants are a play style that I don't really like because I don't like wonky. <laughs> I want to know what my stuff does, and then I can try to get the matchups I want. With the Giants, you just don't know. But I love both of those models. I love how I have them painted. It's, it's, for me, that's good. <laughs> there are people that can paint better than me, but for my skill level, those about as good as I can do. Um, so anyway, so I've, I've got this going. The Jabberwock sucks in combat. He's, you know, he's going to have a f four attacks. He's going to lower their leadership by one. They're probably going to be steadfast, so really it's just a question of, can I just win combat and um, have him fail as steadfast? All right, so I'll go back to the original picture. I think I did two big mistakes here. Uh, the huge one is, on the left, I took my Gortac and I charged his unit of Yetis, which was just dumb, and it's the kind of thing I need to stop doing. Basically, what I need to recognize is that those Yetis are a huge, huge problem to the overall game plan because where they are now, they can redirect my Minotaurs. And if it wasn't for me failing that charge, I would have walked the Minotaurs up closer so that on my next turn, um, I could be assured of a charge. Uh, but because the Gortak failed his charge, which he, you know, was 50-50 chance, or give or take, now I'm screwed. And my opponent on the left-hand side and with my Minotaurs, which is important, has won the chaff game. And all I had to do was, instead of charging him, just take the Gortac and march him up and make it to where he can't get around me to chaff. So it's something I need, I need to work on, is why charge him and take the chance of failing? Like, yes, if I make it, I kill him, I overrun, I'm in my opponent's backfield, he's in a world of hurt. But if I fail it, you know, I'm in trouble, so why take the chance? On the right... Um, I, don't, I, I guess I did that so that he, the Eddies couldn't charge my chariots, so I could bring my chariots up closer. And I'm just not sure. You know, all he has to do is just, he can still charge the, the Yetis at my dogs and then charge his tribesmen in the upper right at that guy. And I don't know. It's, see, I think I'm just wasting my chaff, I guess is what I'm saying. Anyway, after combat here, I do a fair amount of wounds. Not a fair amount. I do between three and five wounds to him. He does five wounds to me. I win combat. He's steadfast, and we all stick. Something like that happened. Um, yeah. I mean, whatever. So, let's see. We go to the Ogre Khan's turn two. Uh, the most important thing is on the left is Yetis go up and redirect my Minotaurs, which is absolutely huge. If my Minotaurs charge them, they have to overrun. The mercenary captains charge them in the flank, and it's all she wrote. Now, luckily, the Gortak can charge them, and it, it'll be a little bit better, but mercenary veterans can then charge the Gortak, probably kill him, and then overrun my Minotaurs and get a charge on both. So, either way, it's not ideal. Uh, let's see on the right. Yeah, he uh, his bulls charge my Razor Tusk, his Yetis charge uh, my dogs. Those two wounds on the Yetis, I think, are from the Mongrel Raiders shooting at him, which I thought was kind of funny. Uh, over here on the left... Yeah, so we go to combat this time, and he easily kills the giant that, that was down to only one wound remaining. He puts a wound on another giant and puts five wounds on the Jabberwock. Um, he's steadfast again, but this time he fails it, and the giant's able to, to run them down. That was very expensive for me. That's not what I was hoping would happen there. <laughs> so I'm down. I've lost two giant, two monsters in exchange for a, a piddly little unit. Not piddly, but a relatively minor unit of six tribesmen. Uh, yetis, of course, easily kill the feral hounds, and the the tribesmen easily kill the um, the razor tusks. So, we go to beast herds, turn three. Uh, I try to charge the minotaurs to his mercenary veterans. I knew it was a long shot; uh, they failed it. 
So then what I was thinking was, um, you know, I charged my, my uh, bunker unit with BSB, my general, and I was being too flippant there. And I charged three, my general and two chariots into his, um, into his yetis. And it was just dumb because they couldn't fit. And it, had I thought about that, I could have taken that chariot and the chariot that I ended up backing up and could have taken, put both of them into his tribesmen on the right. And that's what I would have done. But for some reason, I was just thinking they were 50 wide instead of 40 wide. It was just, it was just sloppiness on my part. So there's that. I'm just going to win. Um, I'm going to overrun to get a couple chariot charges into his Tusker chariot. And then I, I like the idea of overrunning with this bunker unit, but I, but um, if I win, my concern is I don't want him to be able to uh, get a flank charge in them or something. Uh, the Centaur character, um, I don't like his, his shooting option, so he goes ahead and charges a uh, one of his spellcasters. And then afterwards, I won combat. He's down to one wound remaining, but I didn't overrun because I, I thought that by overrunning, I would hit the flank of his tribesmen and back with his general, and I just really didn't want to do that. I think they just killed him. So I just had to restrain, and that guy gets away. After combat, yetis die, overrun into his tusker uh, cavalry, and my bunker just reforms. So this is the big turn for the ogre cons. Um, yeah, as mercenary veterans charge with a minotaur unit he needed a big roll i think he needed a 10 but whatever it was it was it was it was less than average chance of getting it and he got it which just sucked um i really needed him to fail that and then because they're out of the way his uh general's unit was able to charge my bunker unit they needed a long charge and they got that now he's going to come in and going to kill a bunch of stuff i'm going to be steadfast but i think i'm only going to be steadfast once i don't know if my guys can stand up to two rounds of combat against all that um, so but things might be okay the the real disadvantage here we actually have the same number of attacks so him getting the charge means he gets impact hits and I don't but more importantly he has the magic phase where he knows where he needs to put the spell like I could have maybe put a spell on my minotaurs but you know well, I, I, I think I tried and I wasn't able to but but it's, it's always helpful once on your turn you know where to put it. So meanwhile, we go to the magic phase, and he rolls an 11, and, you know, so it's like, it's like 11 to 6, and then something bad happens. I don't remember what. I don't have a scroll, but long and short of it is he got three spells off during his magic phase, including plus one strength. I think the bubble version. Well, that's huge. The other problem here is when I moved, when I was in position with them and my and after my general had overrun into his tusker i measured it and to me it looked like they were just barely within 12 inches of the general which is huge so that means they automatically pass their primal instinct um, when this happened we measured it again and they were just outside of the 12 inches and then i failed it on my reroll, and i failed primal instinct <laughs> damn it that's the one advantage i had was we're going to strike simo he gets impact hits but i um i'm going to get to reroll hits yeah so we go to combat, and yeah, they just, I mean, I, my guys did some wounds, obviously. I think he killed my Minotaurs to a man, just just killed them all. So he did roughly twice the amount of wounds that I did to him, and he just reforms. Uh, meanwhile, over here, he killed more than I was expecting, um, but I'm not sure if he killed more than he should have. I, I just might need to do the math on that to see how durable this bunker unit is. So I probably can't be steadfast one more turn, but what I can do is charge his, his mercenary veterans with my Gortac, and if I can beat them, it's not that long of an overrun. I think it's five, maybe six inches that my Gortac needs to overrun, and then he can charge into the flank of that bull unit with his general, and, you know, that, that, that certainly would help things. And if nothing else... If my BSB's unit runs, the Gortak is stubborn on a 10. So as long as he doesn't kill my Gortak, I, you know, he'll hold him up and I'll save those points, yada, yada. After combat here, we, uh, we kill a Tusker. I lose a chariot in the process. My general sticks around. I'm, I would rather him have run, but I am okay with that. And we go to, what, Beast Herd's turn four, I guess? Uh, whatever turn is. Beast Herd's turn. Gortak charges the mercenary veterans. My Centaur hero charges that spellcaster again just to get the points. Um, I have a chariot come in and support my general. And by the way, his his 
bulls on the right at some point failed a panic tested man and they rallied and they are where you see them. So there's that charge. Here's this charge. After combat, I was so mad. The Gortak combat went first. Gortak did fantastic. I don't think he took a He may not have taken a wound. I mean, he, I don't know. I don't remember exactly what happened. I just don't see any wounds on the guy. He wrecked face, and then he overran and couldn't ro roll the five or six inches to get into the flank of the main unit there. Damn it. These guys beat up my BSB and his unit, and they run him down. Oh, so frustrating. Between all the long charges, the huge magic phase, me failing that overrun, um, in games like this, in most games, the dice come out average overall, but I'm telling you, I was feeling that in all the key moments, the dice just were sh sh not doing well. Uh, let's see, over here, the, um, the, the chariot that helped my general, uh, we, we killed the Tusker cavalry, the chariot either pursued or overran, I think he overran and hit the rear of the yetis, so that's about as good as I could hope, very happy about that. We go to what we're realizing is the last turn. This game was was um, taking longer than it should have. Um, his his unit in the middle charged my chariot. Then I fled, bounced to the building. Didn't take any dangerous terrain wounds, which was crazy. Uh, I had to roll four dice, failing on a one through three, and I took zero wounds. Um, his BSB charged my Gortak. Um, you have to look at his kit, but he felt like he actually had a chance. My Gortak has taken some wounds. I think I was wrong before about the mercenary veteran thing. So he has taken some wounds. Uh, his his bulls on the right charge my general. Uh, I think I'll be okay. I don't think they're gonna. They're certainly not gonna kill him, and then they'll just win combat. And uh, hopefully he can stick. Yeah, there's the BSB coming in. So I've taken four wounds. So I've got two wounds left. Uh, there's this. I really just need. I mean, he's gonna have impact hits. I hate the auto hits, and he has so many attacks. Uh, I'm toughness six, and then I've got a regen. But you know, he's gonna sneak some some wounds through. After combat, look at the top. Those stupid yetis killed my chariot. Like, I get in, get impact hits, and I do next to nothing, and then they just kill them. Uh, yeah, the bulls put three wounds on my general, and uh, which isn't, you know, that outside of the realm of possibility. And they beat him in combat and can't chase him down, thank goodness. The gore attack just slaps his battle standard bearer. It was great. And then we go to here, and that's the end of the game. So... Yeah, at the end of it, I've got what? My Centaur General, a Giant, a Gortak, my General fleeing, a Chariot fleeing, um, a Spellcaster, and Mongol Raiders. But my opponent only has small unit of Yetis, two unit of Tribesmen, and a Spellcaster, and a General. So it actually is real close. I remember I got 10 points out of this. You can get, it's a 20 nil um, victory point game, and then you can get up to five bonus scenario points. So it was either a 10 10, and then he got three scenario points. It was like a a 9-11, and he got two, and I got one. So he had 13, I had 10. Actually, overall, I'm not I'm not unhappy with that. I think in a tournament of this size, about 40 players, you can you can have a, a draw and still do very, very well in the tournament. I think you'd still win the tournament. And that means that I'm going to be playing at the middle tables instead of the top tables. So I'm, I'm okay with the result of this. I was really, really frustrated with my playing. I was really unhappy with the way I played. I feel like I was just making dumb mistakes all the way around. But it was, it was nevertheless a fun game. I'm just, just uh, I need to improve. But anyway, that's it. Here. Thank hope you so you much for watching the video. I truly hope you enjoyed it. As you know, YouTube has a variety of functions you can use to interact with videos such as this. You can like or comment on the video. You can favorite it. You can share it. And of course, you can subscribe to the channel. And I encourage you to do any or all of those things as uh, a way of interacting between viewer and producer. Uh, as always, I'm, I appreciate your patronage on the channel and wish you all the best.